welcome to H3 Health, Happiness, and Hope. Uh, we have a very exciting interview for you tonight with the lovely ladies from Seamless Cares. I'm just waiting for Scott to join me. Apparently, it was his hair was in a disarray or something, but he's going to be joining us right away. And then we will uh, introduce you to um, Rihanna and Robin from Seamless Cares, and they're going to talk to you, uh, explain to you, help you understand an amazing service they have for people who are 65 years plus who might need a little bit of support staying in their home. And so they can come in and support. So they'll get into all the nitty gritty details about that. Um, where is Mr. Sweetman? Oh my goodness. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna introduce you to the ladies right now. And then when Scott comes in, he can join us, okay? So here I have Rihanna and Robin. Rihanna and Robin, welcome to H3. Glad you're here. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Tell us about what you got happening. I'm super excited about it. So tell us more. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, so yeah, we own a uh, company, Seamless Cares. We do uh, personalized in-home care, um, which means that we're able to do any care that is needed in a home. So unlike home care where they can only do medical, we can do pretty much anything in home um, medical and non-medical. And one of the largest things that's happening right now is the new legislation with the government providing funding for this kind of care, uh, effective April 1st, done through Blue Cross. Rhea, uh, Scott is with us now. I Scott, Rihanna just started telling us about this program, and here's my synopsis of it so far. It's for people age 65 plus. They don't need medical care, but they need care supports in order to stay in their own home. Okay. So, yeah. So thanks for joining us, Scott. And you got your background working really nice now. It looks great. Thanks. Yeah, I just ran across the street and chose another house. For this. Perfect. Good news. Perfect. <laughs> we like it. We like it a lot. Excellent. So that's, so non-medical support. So it could be somebody to help like cook, make meals. Yeah. So it, it could be medical or non-medical. We, um, we strictly, yeah, it. for us, care is care. Um, whether it's medical or non-medical. So, yeah, so we can do meals. Um, the definition from CRA for in-home care is um, house tidying, uh, meal prep, meal uh, appointments, um, errands. errands, any any sort of like, and then with the medical, it could be bathing, actual medical procedures, anything like that. Excellent. So in errands, what does that mean also like visiting people visiting some visiting their absolutely, absolutely. Their it can be that companionship piece that so many seniors who may be isolated within their home uh it can also mean helping them get to and from medical appointments uh perhaps picking up groceries again it's really geared around helping them be as independent as we possibly can on on their terms and keeping them in their homes and keeping to do yeah. that so let's try and set the stage a little bit. Um, and I, I know, uh, I'm sorry I was late, but just for our visitors that might be a little bit late like me getting on, we're looking at people 65 and older or 60 and older. Um, so Alberta standard for this program says 65, the retirement age, the retirement age, um, it essentially. So you'd have to be on CPP is kind of what CRA is saying. Okay. And you the demographics of who might really need this type of care. As you know, we're, we're focused on health, hope, and happiness. Yes. And, and so what kind of situation are the people that are, might need this kind of care in? Okay. That's, uh, a, that's, great, a, that's a great question. That's a loaded uh, question. <laughs> so really where it starts. I had a, not, a nap this afternoon. He's fresh. He's got <laughs> yeah. good job, Scott. Yeah. So what, how would you answer that? What ladies? So we begin by, at the end of the day, it starts with AHS, home care, case manager, needs to identify that there's a need in place that's not currently being met. And so what we do is, is and we're fortunate here in Alberta that we can refer, self-refer to AHS home care. And they will come uh, at our request, at our client's request, and do an assessment and determine what level or what support they need to live independently or live within their home. And they will then approve uh, X amount of hours that they need support in the home to help them stay independent. And they have three levels that they kind of go off of. Um, one is respite, um, which essentially is any sort of um, 
short-term medical. And then they have personal care, which again is um, long-term medical or personal needs like bathing, that kind of thing. And then they have what they call houseware or housework care. Um, and that would be like meal prepping, cleaning, that kind of, that kind of errands, errands, those kind of situations. Yeah. I, I know from personal experience that home care, the, the system that was previously in place doesn't allow for any of those things. And no. You know, and, and prior to this, so this new program is actually offered here in Alberta through Alberta Blue Cross. Mm -hmm. And it's in the Lethbridge area, it's live as of April the 1st. Mm -hmm. There, It's also available in Calgary and Edmonton, and it is growing. Grand Prairie is also available, Red Deer. So it is growing across Alberta. Um, and that allows us to, to kind of meet those needs differently than we have historically in the past. Yeah. And, and historically in the past, when a client has received home care, they have had no choice in who their provider is. This program specifically, as it's called, Client Directed Home Care, allows our client to select from a list of approved providers who's available to provide home care to them. We're one of those providers. Yeah, and they're they're doing a differentiation between home care and then in-home in care. care. So home care would be like AHS home care. They come in and do those short-term needs. Um, whether it's discharge, wounds, that kind of thing. And then in-home care is kind of like what private care for seniors is. You linked up that in-home care perfect, the two of you. Did you practice that? That was good. No, not at all. <laughs> We've worked together for a really long time, though, so that probably helps. <laughs> we, we often finish each other's sentences yeah. at this point. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes, this we can read each other's minds. <laughs> Al and I have been doing this for a long time. We just talk over each other. So we don't. Well, <laughs> we do that too. 100%. We get, I still, you know, we started this business in 2020 and I still get goosebumps when I think about the impact that we have on our clients' lives or what we're able to do for clients, just being able to provide medical and non medical. And that really is a game changer for so many. Mm -hmm. Historically, like it's been one or the other. You can't get help here. You can do this. You can't do this. And so by bridging that together and our, internal like care is care yeah you know, that's beautiful. One of the things. It, it's you had a question scott and then i have one go yeah i was just going to say that you know one of the things uh, when i had a very serious illness and i've required care since then is the loss of dignity and you know as you indicated there are so many things that aren't a choice you're treated like you're really a second class citizen you know you're you're treated like a problem often and and i found that's one of the things that i've really identified with my experience is you know the access to care uh is okay but healing i know as you both know just from the way you've expressed yourself and the business you've created is so much more about healing the whole person and about letting them maintain the dignity and independence so they want to get better right if you strip somebody of their dignity you know alan i've talked about people in concentration camps and they were perfectly healthy and and pass away because they no longer feel they have the dignity or a purpose or a desire to live and, yeah you know and this this sounds like a really great program for that how does that motivate what you do well one of the things that we've done to dif uh, differentiate ourselves from like every other private company yeah you're fine um is that we also in that sense um when we first started this business back in 2020 like uh robin had stated one of the things that we wanted to do is make sure that there wasn't like rolling caregivers so we actually don't hire a caregiver unless we have a client and the client is part of the hiring process. So they actually become part of the family, which improves that, that quality of life and that relationship. And so we also have found that it also increases like people feeling like people again and making that choice. Um, a lot of times when you have like rolling caregivers or like you don't know who's coming into your house, you still feel out of control. Um, we don't do that. Like it's the same caregiver. We have one client currently who is dementia and sometimes can't remember their loved one because they're not there every day, but our caregivers are there literally 12 hours a day and they know who they are. Um, so that kind of adds to that situation. And what helps with this program is that people like that who can't afford care can now afford care because the program covers roughly 70 to 80 percent just like any sort of um benefits program um and they just have to top up 
but there must be also a maximum per month, right? Like five hundred dollars a month or something like that, or so. What? When they get assessed, um, they give them a max, yes, but they can get reassessed. Like the program's not even live, and we have a test client currently that's on the program. Um, and they've been assessed within the last, like since February 19th, they've been assessed three times, and their num their hourly rate or hours per allocation yeah. have, have already gone up. Wow. Um, yeah, so it just depends on the need, it's based on hours of needs. Um, and right now, as far as we're aware, the max is uh, 170 hours a month. Woo, um, that's like yeah. full-time hours. Wow. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So it's quite a few hours. Um, and I actually see that changing in the future because in the long run, this is going to help with keeping people in homes. It'll help um, solve the shortage of, of homes for, for seniors. And it'll also help with the fact that we're not buy, or buying and building all of these seniors complexes everywhere where are being short staffed and all of that because they get to pick. Right. And how important is that given the baby boomer, like the cycle we're going to experience, right? Who is exactly. this? Who is this coming to help us here with this conversation? This is my son, Thatcher. So <laughs> hey. he's how our right hand man. He's, yeah. He's <laughs> Yeah, he's our right hand man. He comes to the office all the time with us. So good he knows to see how, you. He knows good how it goes. You. So as I was saying, with the whole, you know, constructing more buildings. So if you're constructing buildings for this huge, huge population uh, curve that's going to go through of all the boomers, and then yeah. after the boomers, that's gone through. Well, then there's going to be a lot of vacant buildings. But this, you know, solves that problem, right? So, yeah. Well, it solves it, um, or assists with it. Either or. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the biggest thing, complaints that we've heard over the years, especially since COVID, is, um, you know, lack of staff, shortage of staff, all that kind of thing. And, you know, all the healthcare workers are getting tired. It's a very stressful situation that they've been put in. Um, and the government placing this, I think, will help in the way that, like, we're not competition for all healthcare companies or AHS. We are all here to make sure that everybody's getting the best life that they can. And whatever that is, that is the way it's going to go. Um, we're not against anybody. All we want to do is help. We want to help people live the highest quality of life that they can. Uh, I think because there's been so many scandals and things in the news, you know, to deal with government and overspending, how, what would you say to people that are concerned that when you have you know, private industry working with healthcare that, you know, the, the money they need to make for profit is coming out of what could be going to the client in, in terms well, of healthcare. Um, I think, I, I think we can answer. answer that to it. I think Two one ways. is by allow, but providing a program like this where we can actually build through Alberta Blue Cross, it actually um, allows us to make sure that there's always a public component to what we're offering. Mm -hmm. And where we're able to provide that extra assistance is where traditionally our met, our healthcare system doesn't account for, for that, um, for the parts of senior care that they need safely to live in their home. When you think of meal prep or housekeeping, traditionally that has not been accounted for in what care is. And so our healthcare system has never been designed to absorb that. However, in today's day and age, for our seniors to age in place, age in place with dignity and age in place with high quality of life, that's kind of the new standard, if you will, from what their expectations are. So I think it's a great bridge in making sure that we still have a very viable publicly funded healthcare system. And the great thing about this program is it's not income tested. It, it, it's a needs test. So if the need is there, the approval is there. And if a client has the capacity or wants to, by choice, have extra care provided to them, you know, they pay privately for that portion of the service. Mm -hmm. This only allows them the actual need as determined by AHS. And so we have a neutral provider assessing that need. And so I think it puts all of us, whether we're in a private provider space, it so puts public. us all on the same even page. Yeah. And the best beauty that I think we show and can provide is that when we provide that care, we're not just here for the individual that we're providing care for. We're here to support the entire family. And that has overreaching beyond just 
a, an acute care need, uh, continuing care need, it's providing that mental well-being for the entire family. And that absolutely has, tangible or intangible, has a huge impact on our society and economy as a whole. And I feel like that's where private comes into play is we're not just there to take care of the client. Um, we become part of the family. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're also there to take care of the family members that have been doing it already. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a load off of everybody. Um, and the family gets that relief um, and that time off that they need. And they get to enjoy their family again as a family and not as a caregiver. I think there's a disconnect and it's generational and, and it affects Western affluent Western cultures the most. And that's where, you know, traditionally uh, children grew up in the same general location as their parents and, and children saw their parents age. They saw, you know, the things that happen to you through aging, disability, um, issues that can arise. But now so many people live in other parts of the country, other parts of the world that they're unprepared. I mean, we have this weird demographic, right? Where we have this big blurt coming through of people that weren't caregivers for their parents, right? And now they in turn are needing care and there's not a generational understanding there of, as you say, the loneliness, the, the loss of dignity, the need for, you know, basic services that go beyond wound care and those types of things. So I think there's a lot of education that goes hand in hand. What do you think, Al? I think this is an amazing program and I think it's going to make such a huge difference in people's lives. The person receiving the care, but as also Rihanna said, everybody around her, maybe, you know, right now there's a daughter who's got her own family and she's working really hard to take care of her own family. And she has to, and with the extra demand of taking care of her mom, she's stressed out and find it hard to, you know, take care of her own family. So I, I think it is a beautiful program that's going to make a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we, I think there's the reality that we have to look at, you know, our healthcare system is continuously evolving as it should, because the needs of society are shifting. And I think the more proactive, and that's how we look at it, the more proactive we can be, there is a savings to our overall healthcare system. You know, yeah. we have great relationships with other AHS partners to make sure that we are providing a very high level of care. We work with our primary care physicians. We work with acute care when our clients are in hospital. We work with transition teams. We are, I think, part of the puzzle to all make this happen. And that's providing a very high level of care that Albertans can count on. You know what? Even I, I, I have an experience with my dad. When my mother passed away, my dad was like useless. Like he didn't know how to cook. He didn't know how to wa wash clothes, nothing, right? And his because he didn't eat very well, he wasn't taking his meds, his health just deteriorated, right? You talked to him on the phone and, you know, he, he couldn't even, he was incoherent, basically. And yeah. so this would then, again, be a, a level to support, even if he didn't need phys care physically, ment uh, medically, that he would be able to get the supports that he's going to eat well and he's going to get support in terms of getting his prescriptions and getting him, getting those filled and, you know, taking his meds as, and, and just eating well and having a tidy home and, and being feeling loved by having somebody come in and, and support him, right? So, yeah. On, uh, how do you feel yourselves in, in terms of ad, advocacy? So do you represent the client uh, for to Alberta Healthcare or do you liaison for Alberta Healthcare with the client? Like uh, kind of, I would say kind, kind of both, both but, but realistically, we are the client's advocate 100%. Um, we've just learned over the last four years of being in business that um, well, I guess I shouldn't say that, but like the ins and outs of AHS, so we can help them around that. Um, now that with, with this program, like having AHS, um, essentially being on our side as well to make sure that these people are getting the best care possible, they're kind of advocating for their care as well. So it's everybody's trying to make sure that the client is getting the best care possible. Yeah. And, and at the same time, improving that efficiency, right? So that, you know, when we have, we have a very high qualified staff of, of healthcare aides, LPNs, RN, you know, so when they have to phone the case manager at AHS and say, this is what's happening with our client and we need to either get them transported to hospital or we need to do this, you know, it's healthcare workers communicating with other healthcare workers just from a different setting versus, so I think what happens is when we say there's a need that, you know, this, this patient is struggling with this, this client is struggling with this, 
they understand it, you know, because it's like legalese or if you will, healthcare ease, right? There's a certain language that they have to understand and they do understand. So when they're hearing that information firsthand from a fellow healthcare provider, they understand that level of urgency if needed or, or where that needs to be. And so it allows us to, you know, there's ways to make things happen, I guess, within our acute care system if someone's severely ill and allows us to make sure that that happens in a very time sensitive and when it needs to be time sensitive and other times this can hold off and when they can take the recommendation from our care team that we can wait till monday or this can't wait till monday then there's an opportunity to address that so we're we're actually absolutely maximizing healthcare dollars yeah so it's basically kind of a system navigation supports that they get just as being part of this network right so yeah cool yeah absolutely and so with us providing we're just another provider uh and an option for families who would prefer to be at home versus in care facilities and supportive living then and, and every family is now in an opportunity where they can make those decisions that best work for their family and we found that like the hs system is actually kind of taken us on as like an advocate in the sense that like if one of our clients ends up in hospital they're really appreciative that we're still able to go in and provide care um especially if they're short staffed in the hospital um we actually just ran into that situation our caregivers were still able to go in and provide that companionship and provide the dietary needs and the, and the advocate for what our clients were needing yes. in the, in the hospital know, are you so still in the hospital in yeah hospital. wow yeah 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 sure cool mm -hmm. you know and there's still you know so what it did is a lot us facilitate some of the needs that our clients needed a lot sooner because we recognize this is out of norm for them right. so what that does when you have an lpn saying this is not their normal talking to another lpn they were able to go back to the care the acute care teams in the hospital and say we need to be on this because of this this and this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love right? this program and it's proactive approach and it's it, it and i think it will as i as i mentioned earlier it is about changing the the needs of what we need out of healthcare now versus what we needed 50 60 years ago it's it's changing our society right. needs to change this is adapting it's not perfect but it's a step in the right direction as far oh, as oh in huge step scott had a comment yeah i well a question actually and I, it dovetails in perfectly it's like you segued us is yeah i mean this is a fantastic improvement that i think is pretty hard not to see as an improvement where do you see from your personal experience and from your professional understanding where do you see us being 10 years from now in in this field this is a great question this for is you. a great question <laughs> this is a, robin's experienced this it, personally already so, so this is a great question and, and part of how seamless cares came about was my husband was sick a few it, it, back in 2000. He got sick in 2015. And so what I identified then that there were some huge gaps in what I could do and help provide for him. And so seamless cares really started because of what I identified then was, wasn't available to me at the time. And so my hope and our hope with seamless cares is that we can start bridging those gaps. And I think you are seeing our provincial government move towards a more collaborative approach to healthcare. It, it, it's not just primary, it's primary care, acute care, it's organizations, it providers like us providing that in-home care. It's all of us at the table finding the right solutions specific to that client's needs. And not all of our clients need to see a GP, many of them do. But it does mean when we have to phone our, our primary care physician and say, this is what our client's struggling with, that we're getting in front of the right people at the right time so we can best use our healthcare dollars. I think one of the things that you've you've touched on a few times, and and I think that our society is is has a phobia of having private enterprise involved in what they yeah. see as government business, and we're getting much wiser than that. I, I've lived abroad in many countries, and countries where it's a collaborative approach between the families, between you know caregivers, and it may be cultural, it may be like yourselves uh, an enterprise, but where you have that collaboration, the ultimate outcome is better care yes, and not, not just for the people that need the care but as you said the families the communities because when somebody suffers in a community the whole the neighborhood suffers as well yes. right? it's not limited to that house it spreads through the community so I, I i'm happy to see and i think that alberta is one area where we we're not as phobic of that collaboration between private enterprise and, and i agree with that yeah. yeah, and it's 100% right. I mean, we, it's all players at the table. 
yeah. right? And there is a role for private enterprise Absolutely. within our healthcare system. Yeah. And 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 I'm the first advocate. I believe in a I wholly and Seamless Cares believes in a in a publicly funded healthcare system. Yeah. We are our, our, our acute care or primary care needs to be publicly funded. Yeah. This is taking that extension where we're providing public dollars for to make sure that care is there. Mm -hmm. And then for those families who want additional care or are you know, there is the ability to top up from there. Yeah. And what so we're putting that basic it. need as well as an extra need. And that is vital to how we grow. Uh, we always have a, an argument in my house and it's, you know, I, I think that private health care is important. I think have a balanced system that having options is is important for for everyone regardless of where you sit on the economic scale but how does the program help people that let's say are financially destitute they just have no extra money what can they do well i think because this gives them the choice of who they want to be their provider there are providers who who can work with very low cost margins and make sure that all their care needs are being met and then for those that want more they can pay for more and so I think what this ultimately does is make sure that there's base funding for everybody who needs it. Alan, that said, we're, we're, we're not, not the perfect fit for everybody. And that's and we know why, that. that's why we love this program because there's, there's a list currently, even just for Lethbridge, there's a list of like uh, 10 to 15 providers just that can provide in the Lethbridge area. So one can, size fits most. I can say from being a bigger person, one size fits most is yeah. the, you know, what comes next. It yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know? Alan, uh, given your profession, do you think that there's, and I, if it doesn't exist now, do you think it might be coming where benefits could help support a, a, something like this in terms of, of the care they can provide? That's a well, difficult question, I know. Yeah, no, I would certainly think it would, though. Like, I mean, right now, most of the contracts have uh, health care supports, like medical health care supports, right? Home nursing care, those kind of things, which wouldn't extend to this. But why, obviously, the need is there and people are going to have those supports. And if people can, uh, um, if it's more cost effective for them to buy insurance and have that protection instead, well, why wouldn't they, right? So, yeah. Well, so, yeah, no, if it doesn't exist right now, which I'm going to do some more work now. <laughs> Like, uh, well, some providers do actually have some, um, shockingly, Blue Cross, right? Um, yeah. Some do have some coverage, but there is their their parameters are very strict. Um, right. right now, so our hope is that in the future, their their parameters kind of do a little bit more lenient on that. Like right now, they can't have anything less than an LPN in their house, that kind of thing. But my guess is with this new program those kind of benefits will will definitely come and they'll they'll be a little bit more lenient in the in the kind of care the system also, has to change can I right? one example that i think comes to mind we have a client of ours who isn't able to do a lot for herself um she's wheelchair bound um can't move a lot of her uh, is not ambulatory in a lot of those ways her mother was hospitalized and it was one of our caregivers that went with our client to help care for her mother and do things like paint her nails and do her hair, our client physically can't do that. So that emotional connection for our client was like, I, they were so overwhelmed that we would actually help brush their mother's hair because they physically could not. Mm -hmm. That warms my heart because we're mm -hmm. talking about, I'm brushing somebody's hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge. huge. And our medical system, and it's not, it never was designed to be able to accommodate tasks like that. Right. But that's what we need today. That's not what we needed 60, 70 years ago, but that's what we need today. That level yeah. of humanity. Alan, we have one minute. One so, minute. Yeah. Sorry, okay. lady. Alan and I well, can talk all night. No we, problem. We need to talk about yeah. this all night. So you guys can yeah. And we get on a runaway and we're trying to keep it to 30 minutes is what we're trying yeah. to do because totally. this is, we're trying to, we have a podcast. This is a podcast as well. Right. right? So, but one thing I want to just kind of add in here is like loneliness is an epidemic, right? Oh. 50, 60 years ago, you grew up and there was always people around you, right? There was like, you know, six people in a thousand square foot home, right? Now there could be where you're by yourself in a 2,500 square foot home, but you're all on your own, right? And, and your that kids are 5,000 miles away. Yeah. yeah, 
exactly. So even this, in terms of the mental health supports and the engagement with another human being, that you can kind of, and the, the same human being, right? You assign somebody and they come back week after week or day after day kind of thing, depending on the need, right? Huge, yeah. huge benefit. Yes. Huge. Absolutely. Cool. Well, yeah. so, with the, oh, oh, go ahead. What was going to say, Scott? I was just going to say it's really exciting um, what you guys are doing, and uh, we're really lucky in the community to have this option. And uh, thank you for coming tonight and sharing that with us. And we really hope that people will contact you with questions they have. And the change is going to come because the world is market driven, and there's a huge demographic of people that are are reaching retirement and and you know, it's advanced age and you're going to need care and it has to come in some form or another. And I think this is the, a great way to start that and usher it in. So our viewers, if you are interested in learning more, we've been displaying the website on here, but maybe you're just listening to the audio portion. It's seamlesscares.ca. Just go on there and you send a little contact us. And one of the lovely people there, maybe, maybe Rihanna and Robin themselves, will get back to you and let you know what how they might be able to assist you. Yeah, and I just want to add to that, that Alan and I don't get paid. We don't accept any advertising promotion. When we invite guests on, it's because we believe in what they're doing and we want to share that with our viewers and our listeners. So uh, this isn't a case of that it's, you know, we're advertising seamless care services. We really think they're cool and, and there's an interesting opportunity here uh, with them or people who do similar things to them. And we really hope that our community gets healthier, more hopeful, and it brings about happiness for, for everyone involved. Well said, Scott. Ladies, do you have anything you want to add as we wrap this for this show up? I just thank thank, thank you, you for so the opportunity much. Yeah. and and just you know we are an Alberta made solution to an Alberta and and it's not just an Alberta problem but it's a national problem but we are a local solution to it and we're excited to live here we work here we volunteer here and we have an amazing team behind us that make all this happen. Yeah. Beautiful, you're beautiful human beings. We're glad to have you on here, Scott. Take us home, there, brother. Thank you for our visitors tonight. Seamless Care, look them up. The ladies will certainly help you get the problem solved. My good friend, Alan Friesen, the acapellist, and myself, Scott Sweetman, have a great week, and we'll see you back here next week, 7 p.m. Thank you very much. All right, that we're all.
Jess TV every Tuesday night. Who got next? When you drop that booty down low.